Chapter 18, Natural Disasters. The losses brought about on humans, animals and property by a natural process without the interference of man is named as a natural disaster. There are a number of natural disasters affecting Sri Lanka of them. Here we study the following natural disasters, cyclones, earthquakes, tsunami and wildfires. Cyclones. When the pressure of the air at a certain place in the atmosphere closer to the Earth's surface drops below the pressure around that place, a low pressure area is created. If this low pressure situation develops further, it becomes a depression in the atmosphere. If this situation develops further, it gives rise to a cyclone. As you can see in figure 18.1, this is the movement of air during a cyclone. You can see that the air particles will be moving uh, in a circular direction, forming a whirl. And figure 18.1 shows the satellite picture showing the movements of clouds during a cyclone. The cyclones formed in the North and South Asian oceans are known as tropical cyclones. The cyclones generated in the Northern Pacific Ocean are called as typhoons. Cyclones produced in the North Atlantic Ocean are termed as hurricanes. Factors that cause cyclone. Most of the cyclones uh, originate in the atmosphere closer to oceanic areas. Therefore, the existence of a large oceanic area and its temperature being above 27 degrees Celsius to a depth of 60 meters is a factor that causes cyclones. Occurrence of convection currents in the atmosphere. What are convection currents? Lighter or less dense warm particles in atmosphere rises up while heavier or more dense cool air particles will sink. Such a movement creates circulation, circulatory patterns in the atmosphere and this is known as convection currents in the atmosphere. So this occurs naturally and this is a factor that causes cyclones. Minimal tendency of the horizontally blowing wind to sweep vertically. So naturally wind will blow horizontally and there's minimal tendency for the horizontally blowing wind to sweep vertically. Location of the point at which the depression is closer to the equator. Cyclones are not formed at the equator therefore these points where depression occurs being located closer to the equator is another factor that causes cyclones. Increasing humidity of the atmosphere beginning from surface of the ocean to higher atmospheric levels. As you already know, humidity is the amount of water content in the atmosphere. So when this becomes higher, higher than 60%, it causes cyclones. As cyclones are born on meeting the above conditions, cyclones are restricted only to some oceanic regions on the Earth. Structure of a cyclone. In addition to the circulation of air particles, air rises up in the central part of the whirl of the cyclone. This upward movement of air gives rise to a cylindrical cloud wall. The central part of the whirlwind is called as the eye. This is a region with little wind and free of rain and clouds. It would have spread within a region of 30 to 60 kilometers from the center of the world. In satellite photographs, this appears as a black circle. The cylindrically arranged clusters of clouds around the eye is known as the eye wall. Now this is a region with heavy rains and fast blowing wind. Due to the eye wall, a few spiral bounds of clouds can also be seen. Now this too is a region with heavy rains and speedy wind conditions.
why are cyclones considered as a favorable phenomenon in nature cyclone is the main mechanism that distributes the huge solar energy received by the regions close to the equator of the globe we receive a huge amount of solar energy from the sun and this is majorly received by the regions closer to the equator of the globe and this solar energy gets distributed to the north and south of the globe by the mechanism of a cyclone cyclones originating time to time in indian pacific and atlantic oceans provide the factors essential for the life of plants and animals on earth though in nature cyclones is a favorable phenomenon today more attention is focused on the disasters brought about it here is an article about an experience of a cyclone from this article you would uh, understand that the major effects of a cyclone are heavy rain and fast blowing wind now let us compare the above experience with the action of a cyclone within the cyclone winds the whirl is very fast and the whirl moves in a certain direction with a certain speed after a strong blowing of wind from one direction comes a state of tranquility that is when the eye of the cyclone passes through that point when the other part of the world passes that point a speedy wind like the one that blew first blows in the opposite direction now this table gives us the information about some cyclones that affected sri lanka in the past 50 years according to the above tables what are the months in which most of the cyclones affected sri lanka and from which areas had cyclones entered sri lanka the most it may be clear to you that most of the cyclones that affected sri lanka had occurred in november and december and they had entered sri lanka from the eastern coast in 1978 the death toll due to cyclones was 915 however since warnings could be given because of the development of technology the number of deaths has been reduced in the subsequent years using high technology the development the department of meteorology keeps vigilance over the cyclones around 24 hours in occasions of a probable cyclonic situations to sri lanka the latest information about it are communicated to the relevant government institutions now here is an activity to demonstrate the movement of air during cyclones using water so the apparatus has to be set up using this method and once the apparatus is set up it has to be flipped upside down making sure that the bottle filled with water is on top now rotate the apparatus slowly in the anti clockwise direction you will be able to understand how air moves during a cyclone by the movement of water in the bottle placed on top this figure shows the parts of cyclones which entered sri lanka from 1901 to 2000 assignment 1 study the above map and prepare a list of districts in sri lanka which are prone to cyclones an earthquake is a jolt or shoulder like movement of the earth's surface Less violent earthquakes are known as tremors. Earthquakes and earth tremors are caused by releasing of the energy stored in the earth's crust. Structure of the earth. In order to understand how earthquakes are happening, we need to know about the structure of the earth. The earth has three layers crust mantle and core the mantle is made up of an upper mantle and lower mantle region the core is made up of an outer core and inner core region evidence support the fact that the crust 
The topmost layer of the earth is composed of a number of tectonic plates which move relative to one another. The earth crust consists of a few large tectonic plates and this map identifies the tectonic pl plates of the globe. This activity can be used to demonstrate how the tectonic plates which form the earth crust move relative to one another. The setup has to be made by using this method and then the container has to be shaken gently and we need to observe the way the pieces of polystyrene move. The movement of pieces of polystyrene corresponds to the way the tectonic plates move on semi-solid magma in the upper part of the mantle. Now what is magma? Magma is an extremely hot semi-solid semi-liquid rock that is found in the upper part of the mantle. And so the tectonic plates are found on top of this magma. How tectonic plates move? It has been identified that there are three ways or methods of movement of tectonic plates relative to one another at the boundaries. And these three methods are divergent border, convergent border and slip border. Now let's look into each method of tectonic plate movements in the boundaries. Divergent border. At this border, the two tectonic plates move away from each other. At divergent borders, magma in the upper mantle rises up between the two tectonic plates and therefore a new crust is created. Most of such tectonic plate borders are located in the oceanic flow. Example, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It is located along the flow of the Atlantic Ocean and it is part of the longest mountain ridge. Convergent border. At this border, the two tectonic plates collide and one plate moves underneath the other. Volcanoes erupt in these regions in which these movements occur. Example, St. Helens Mountain. As you can see, the magma in the upper mantle region will seep out in the form of a volcanic eruption. Slip border. At this border, the two tectonic plates move away from each other while being in contact. Now understand the difference between divergent border and slip border. In both these methods, the two tectonic plates move away from each other, but in slip border, although they move away from each other, it happens while they are being in contact. Sometimes the tectonic plate cram into each other during these movements and this cramming causes a large energy to be spread through the earth's surface and this causes violent earthquakes. Example, St. Andreas Fault found in California. Intensity of earthquake. At the points at which the tectonic plates have colloid impact or where they cram into each other, the layers of rocks bend. When the force exerted to bend these rocks exceeds the yield point of the rocks, the rock layer breaks. The yield point of the rocks is like the maximum amount of stress the rocks can which stand before they break. This point of breakage is the focus of the earthquake. The point on earth above the focus is the epicenter. Seismic waves spread in all directions from the focus of an earthquake. These waves convey energy 
along the surface of the earth and also through the interior of the earth a wave carries energy from one place to another the strength of these seismic waves can be measured by the seismometers installed at various places of the earth so the seismometer is an instrument that is used to measure the strength of seismic waves the apparatus which automatically records the information related to seismic waves is called the seismograph based on the information recorded by the seismograph and the damage inflicted to buildings ground and humans a scale known as richter scale was introduced in 1953 by charles f richter based on the richter scale we can predict the damage cost here is a table indicating the intensities of earthquake and their results as you can see if the richter scale of the earthquake is between 7.4 to 8 a big damage may be caused if you study this map you will see that the the regions in which strong earthquakes have occurred in the world from the above map it may be clear to you that the earthquakes have occurred mostly in the borderland region it happens in the borders between tectonic plates of them most of the earthquakes have broken out in the region called pacific ring of fire This region is the border of the very large Pacific tectonic plate. Now this table gives us information on strong earthquakes that took place during the past few years. Assignment 2 study the above table and find out the following information. How many earthquakes have occurred during the past 13 years? which are above 7.4 in the richter scale what are the countries in which those earthquakes occurred what is the country in which the highest number of earthquakes have occurred Re recently scientists have observed that in addition to natural causes some activities of humans could also be the regions reasons for earthquakes testing nuclear weapons underneath the earth drilling earth to great depths to mine oil and minerals as you all know natural oils and minerals are obtained from the depths of the earth by drilling them erecting dams and constructing large water reservoirs constructing very large buildings of great height and weight these activities cause greater damage to the earth surface and hence it could cause earthquakes 